Welcome back to another episode with interview with RabbitCoin on YouTube channel. As you know, we wanted to know correct information in Web3 and blockchain space. Mr. Charles Dossi with me, uh, which is CEO of DYDX Foundation, which is very biggest uh, decentralized exchange on the world. So, Mr. Charles, welcome. Thank you for accepting our interview request. How are you doing over there? How is it going? Doing great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm very excited about the conversation. Yeah, I'm also so excited because I'm gonna have, uh, ask. I'm, I'm gonna ask you a couple question about uh, decentralized finance, especially DYDX and your updates. A little bit about yourself. First of all, could you tell us your uh, background and uh, your experience, especially who does don't know your background? So absolutely, uh, I've been uh, spending a lot of time in Asia over the past twenty years. Uh, before joining DYDX, I was for some time in the fintech industry. Uh, I was an entrepreneur. Uh, I joined also the Hong Kong government where I was uh, head of fintech. So I, I built uh, back in 2016 uh, the fintech ecosystem in Hong Kong, thinking of how we grow the, uh, the different verticals of payment, blockchain, and uh, other fintech technologies in Hong Kong, working with uh, with regulators, working with central banks and, and secretaries. Later on, I joined uh, Consensus. Uh, so I was head of Asia for Consensus. Consensus is a company behind Metamask or Infura. So I've been helping a, a lot of uh, the projects within Consensus to grow and shine within uh, within Asia, from Australia to uh, uh, to India. And uh, I joined the DYDX Foundation as a CEO uh, more than a year ago now. Super excited to work with uh, the DYDX Foundation team, uh, which is rich of 20 uh, top talents, but also with all the ecosystem of DYDX. Obviously, the DYDX DAOs, DYDX trading, and multiple contributors and and uh, and, and the validators now that now that the DYDX chain is uh, is up and alive. So cool, so cool. It seems very rich experience behind of you. Uh, let me ask that, but when did you uh, discover the Web3 space and when did you do your first transaction with crypto? Yeah, pretty exciting. I, I started the Internet Web1 in uh, 1999. I was actually a teacher uh, with, uh, in, a, in a cyber cafe to help people discover and understand what to do with, uh, with, the, with the Internet. Uh, later on, when I was a student, I was doing quite a bit of peer-to-peer uh, -peer file sharing, uh, exchanging MP3s and movies and stuff like that. So I was quite deep in this space. And uh, at some point in time, someone uh, came to our group and said, oh, there is this peer-to-peer -peer money. And since I, I was spending quite some time on peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, uh, the peer-to-peer -peer aspect was something I was very familiar with. Um, and then there was this new element of peer-to-peer -peer money, and that was a Bitcoin white paper. Uh, so I did my first transactions on, on Bitcoin in, uh, in 2011 and wow. uh, then fall into some rabbit holes one after another uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, Bitcoin itself. Later on, I spent uh, more time in, uh, on Ethereum uh, with, a, with the birth of smart contracts and, and spending uh, all my time for the most part on, on crypto and the digital asset industry uh, since then. Yeah, you know, one of the early, early adaptory crypto space. So I, I should say that. And in your opinion, uh, how do you describe the Web3 world? Well, how, how do you de describe the Web3 space? I mean, yes, absolutely. I think the, the Web3 is, uh, is uh, one additional iteration from, from the web in general, right? Yeah. So the yeah. way I try to project myself in the future of Web3 is by looking at the history of Web2 and Web1. And I think we find the same patterns. Uh, when the, the, the first, the early days of the internet, I was part of it. People were thinking, oh, the internet is only uh, for thieves and scams, and you should never put your, your, your credit card number on the internet because uh, all your money will disappear. And fast forward 10, 20 years later, everyone is living with the internet every day and, and does a lot of transactions. So there is always uh, some kind of cycles where people are skeptical at the beginning, uh, where there is a, a small group of early adopters. And then from this early adopters group and, and skepticism, uh, there is a larger trend which gets, uh, gets more attention. So I think we are exactly in the same pattern from Web3. 
Uh, some people are still doubtful, but uh, at the end of the day, Bitcoin is 10 years plus now and uh, and is doing well. Ethereum has been growing. The Cosmos stack has been growing. And I think we, we see some additional kind of waves of additional users coming in Web3. So Web3 is definitely going through some cycles, the same way there was a uh, boom and bust in the internet in the early days. Um, yeah. But but uh, it's definitely uh, catching more attention. I think what is very interesting is to see how the space uh, is getting more and more professional. We see that at DYDX with more and more validators, for example, which are very professional teams dedicated to being validators and the staking economy. Uh, we see the same, for example, for contributors to the DYDX ecosystem, where people getting grants are more and more essentially small companies speci uh, specialized in DeFi research, token economics research, risk management. Uh, so the space used to be um, a smaller group uh, where people were able to do all kinds of things just mm -hmm. to help grow their business and grow the space. But with, um, uh, with the industry of Web3 growing, we see more and more specialization. And I think that's a really good sign that there is a good traction and everyone is getting more specialized either in security and custody or in trading or in research or in media, for example, around the, around the space. As you said, Web3 space every single day and growing and growing and growing. And also, DYDX is biggest decentralized platform in the Web3 space. That is why I should ask that. Could you provide an overview of uh, DYDX foundation mission and uh, its role in the DeFi ecosystem? Absolutely. So the D DYDX Foundation was created about, about two years ago. It's a non-profit uh, foundation registered in Zug in Switzerland, uh, in the Crypto Valley, together with many other major uh, crypto projects registered in, uh, in Switzerland as well. The team of the DYDX Foundation, as I said earlier, is about 20 people uh, spread uh, over many different countries. And uh, the role of the foundation is really to enable the DYDX ecosystem. Uh, so within the DYDX ecosystem, there is different contributors. There is contributors from multiple countries. There is different DAOs, two DAOs within DYDX as per today. The Grants DAO, which uh, distributes uh, and manage community funds to essentially finance um, uh, research, uh, specific initiatives, community projects. We have also the Operation DAO, which was created earlier this year. Uh, the Operation DAO uh, was created by the community after some votes and some uh, some coordinations among themselves. And they also raised about six million US dollars of, of, uh, of funds to essentially operate some key infrastructure for the, the DYDX chain. So at the foundation, we really focus on enabling uh, this ecosystem and making sure it has enough uh, visibility within uh, the general community. Uh, as well as collecting people sometimes uh, they, they would not know each other yet and, and we try to help. We help also with um, decentralized governance, bringing tools, bringing uh, different uh, platforms so that there is uh, all the tools the, co the community will need to essentially get a high velocity governance. One secret of the success of DYDX over the years is the velocity. Uh, the pace at which uh, innovation, at which new features, at which new markets have been essentially released to make sure that the, the, essentially the platform is thriving today. Today, uh, DYDX is the largest derivative DeFi exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, an average, uh, in, on, on average, uh, the volume on DYDX is about $1 billion US, wow. US dollar every day. And uh, the community is celebrated uh, this summer in July, one trillion dollar accumulated volumes. So it's wow. definitely a very strong player uh, in the space of, uh, uh, of of exchanges in general. And as a protocol, DYDX represents, roughly speaking, about one percent of the global crypto derivative uh, trading volume uh, globally. So the biggest competitor, so to say, of of DYDX today is the centralized finance. So think of the the Binance, the Coinbase of the world. But we see a shift, uh, very clearly a shift, uh, essentially people expanding their trading venues uh, and their trading kind of habits uh, within DeFi and, and DYDX is definitely their first stop. Maybe just as a conclusion to try to project ourselves in what could be possibly the future. If you look at the way the spot market has been evolving over the past years, Mm -hmm. You think of Uniswap. Uniswap started a few years ago, and obviously it started from zero, 
And today, Uniswap represents about between 5 to 7% of the global spot trading volumes. All right. And today, All right. DYDX represents 1% only of the crypto derivative trading volumes. So there is definitely some space for growth. And what we've seen in spots might also be, be seen in, a, in, a, in crypto derivatives. Congratulations for really, really high volume. So uh, here is a question. Where do you see uh, in the next five years? I mean, the DYDX, where, uh, where it's going to be? You, you, you understand what I mean, actually? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So there is, there is, in my opinion, a bright future for the DYDX community and the DYDX platform overall. The mission uh, of DYDX since inception has been and remain uh, to be one of the largest exchange and enabling uh, uh, and providing access to financial opportunity. DYDX has been laser focused on crypto derivative, which is the largest uh, crypto market. Uh, just to give you an order of magnitude, every time there is one Bitcoin or one ETH being traded in spot, there is about 10 times the same amount of Bitcoin and ETH traded in derivative. So the way I see the market for for DeFi in general and for DYDX is the growth of the of the DeFi space in general and having more and more app chains such as the DYDX chain. Um, but also I see um, a very fast paced innovation. One thing the community of DYDX is very excited about is permissionless markets. So what we should be able to see within the early days of next year is essentially on the DYDX chain, having the capabilities to for users to launch their own market on DYDX. And that's really a, a very interesting, uh, I would say, step forward uh, for, for the protocol overall to leave in the hands of, uh, of the users of the DYDX protocol the opportunity and the optionality to launch by themselves market. So of course you can think of more trading pairs, maybe more meme coins, Pepe coins, and all these uh, these altcoins coming into DYDX faster. That's one opportunity. I don't think this is the most exciting in my personal views. The most exciting is to see what will be doing the overall DeFi market. Uh, how will real world asset maybe uh, make a push within within the the world of derivative? Uh, will people start to trade carbon credits? Will people start to trade and decide to launch a market, for example, for uh, commodities such as rice, wheat, cocoa, or anything like this? So whenever you give uh, to the internet community and specifically the DeFi community a very open formula, you get usually surprises and you get new markets which are exclusive to DeFi. And I think the future of DeFi and how we're going to see the next wave of growth will be essentially when we enable the DeFi market to express itself and to create products which exclusively ex uh, exist in DeFi. So permissionless market is one thing I'm very excited about. The second thing I'm excited about, and I think this is coming in the near future, is what uh, I will call the centralized exchanges, centralized finance, traditional mm -hmm. finance, becoming a gateway to DeFi. Mm -hmm. I really believe that uh, the back end of fintech companies, the back end of crypto centralized exchanges will change very quickly and they will essentially facilitate access to DeFi protocol. Should it be for trading uh, derivative with DYDX, but maybe for lending or maybe for spot trading? And um, I think this kind of hybrid access to decentralized finance will uh, will really resonate and, and, and fit with many uh, new users coming into the, the, the crypto world who don't want to deal with uh, hardware wallets, who don't want to deal with specific uh, crypto wallets, but just want to have a good experience in, in crypto assets in general. So there is a demand for that. People will always have the choice to go directly maybe to DYDX, but maybe they will have also the, the opportunity and the choice offered uh, by centralized exchanges to give them access via this gateway of CFI to DeFi. And I think that's something uh, which might be happening as well in Turkey. And I'm, I'm very excited about this, um, this uh, potential evolution of the, the DeFi industry. I'm also, I will ask the question about Turkish market. We, we're going to touch there. Before the, before the do that, if you could describe with just three words, the DYDX, what would it be and why? Here is a question. So the way I would describe DYDX in three words would be innovation, right. ambition. Right. So the three words I would pick uh, to describe DYDX would be number one, innovation, number two, ambition, 
And number three, diligence. Diligence. Great. Great. It's really uh, impressive. All right. Here is another question from our subscribers. Uh, there has been a lot of updates for the DYDX ecosystem recently. Can you share some uh, recently highlights? Uh, I mean, recently, uh, maybe information. So. The past few weeks at DYDX has been extremely busy and the, the community has been really kind of uh, bring the catalyst and, and essentially uh, the sparkle for a massive change within DYDX. In short, DYDX chain, uh, Genesis happened a few, a few days ago. So about 60 validators have created the DYDX chain, which is running the open source software of DYDX. So all DYDX, uh, as you know it today, has been open source and, and validators, as well as the uh, DYDX operations DAO, have launched as a DYDX chain. So what it means is that there is today a new generation of DYDX experience, which is faster in throughput, easier into in, in, kind, in terms of uh, user experience overall, as well as more connectivity for the chain itself. So the DYDX chain is now live. Users are invited if they want to, to bridge uh, mm -hmm. from the Ethereum DYDX to the DYDX chain. And uh, the operations DAO has been informing uh, the general public of the different steps. So DYDX chain is now in an alpha period, which is just a few days after being launched kind of settling down the software, having all the validators taking care of, of the chain itself. Within a few weeks, we might see uh, uh, essentially a, an upgrade to the beta version right. uh, of okay. DYDX, where some trading will be enabled uh, with probably some limitations uh, as, per, uh, as per the DAO uh, uh, reports. And uh, probably by, by the end of the year, uh, the, the full launch of the DYDX, the new DYDX essentially, built on the top of the DYDX chain. So through bridging and through staking, uh, there is really a totally new experience for, for users in general. Uh, what is important to notice also is DYDX token holders, if they decide to stake uh, their DYDX tokens on the DYDX chain via some validators, uh, they will be able to essentially uh, receive uh, some rewards. So the, all the trading fees of the DYDX uh, exchange protocol will be distributed to validators and to stakers. So that's really a first where uh, essentially if you own some DYDX and if you decide to take them on the DYDX chain, you will receive USDCs as trading fees in proportions of, of your stake within the full network. Um, you will receive as well some DYDX tokens. So it's really a new experience and it's a way to really engage deeper and decentralize uh, further the DYDX ecosystem by enabling a new token mechanics, uh, which we detail on social media and, and various blog posts. And this new token mechanic uh, enabling users and, and, and token holders who decide to stake to really uh, participate more actively into securing uh, the DYDX chain and being a more active participant uh, into the DYDX journey. Really good. Yeah, as you said, there is also new token mechanism in the, on the DYDX chain. Could you tell us more what kind of benefits users will get from this? So when, when users decide to bridge away from Ethereum to the DYDX chain, the DYDX token will remain, uh, will remain but exist on the DYDX chain, essentially. So they will, they will get no more DYDX tokens on Ethereum beside a governance-only token. And the core token will be essentially migrated and bridge to the DYDX chain. If the users on the DYDX chain decide to stake their token with a validator, 100% uh, of the fees from the exchange will be rewarded to stakers on the DYDX chain. Uh, in the past year, there was between 50 to $80 million of fees collected by the protocol. Mm -hmm. So we cannot predict the, the future, but we can get a, a little bit uh, uh, an idea of the scale. Uh, of the of the fees collected by the protocol, so this is potentially millions of dollars of USDCs because the, the when users are using the DYDX exchange, they, they pay trading fees in in USDC, and these fees will be distributed to stakers. So if you stake on the DYDX exchange, you will receive a portion of these fees depending on how many uh, total uh, 
uh, DYDX token are, are staked on the DYDX chain. What is very important is to capture that this is the first time, uh, to the best of my knowledge, that you see an application chain, an app chain, essentially securing its network without uh, starting some additional inflation of the token. All right. So you stakers on the DYD exchange will be receiving for the most part USDCs, a little bit of uh, DYDX tokens, which are used for, uh, for gas fees. But this is really being part of the, uh, I would say, of the uh, of the journey of DYDX and, and providing some services and receiving uh, uh, receiving some rewards for the services provided in USDCs for the most part. It's it seems really good and very strong the utility. I have to say that. Uh, another question is: Do you have any specific new updates or new plans, especially? Uh, as a DYDX foundation or new partnership plans, will you announce it near future? So, so the DYDX foundation is is really active in multiple topics within the community in general. I think right now is a very special time where all the validators and a lot of the community members are, are active in a, in essentially building and kind of setting uh, the new chain. And so far, it has been doing very 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 well. Um, what what is exciting is to see how much mind share and how many people wants to contribute and want to be part uh, of the of the DYDX ecosystem overall. It's a very decentralized ecosystem, so the foundation is very active uh, in helping and connecting people. Uh, but eventually, all the decisions are made by the community. So if you want to keep the pulse of what's happening within the DYDX ecosystem, I really invite you to follow as uh, the DYDX uh, Twitter Foundation Twitter account. There is also dydx.forum where you can get all the information. But there is uh, uh, conversations about liquid staking uh, uh, ongoing within the community uh, nowadays. There is also a big uh, uh, kind of uh, reward, uh, uh, an incentive program, which is being discussed and, and, and uh, under some uh, governance votes right now to essentially enable further the new uh, DYDX chain. So I'm excited about all this these projects by uh, in the uh, individuals and independent contributors, which we really keep bringing and and uh, bringing up the, the DYDX ecosystem overall and and keep a kind of uh, uh, building towards our mission to provide uh, and demo democratize uh, financial opportunities. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, just a reminder: if you would like to uh, learn more content or new updates, uh, any information about the uh, DYDX Foundation, you can follow the DYDX, follow, uh, DYDX Foundation official Twitter account. I will also add the description section. And also, if you would like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications or interview with Rabbit on YouTube channel. Uh, here is the last question. It's going to be uh, about the Turkish community. You guys also w visit uh, Istanbul because of the Cosmoverse 2023. It was really amazing event. And also I, I was very, very excited and so happy to host you in my own country. Uh, it was really, really nice pleasure to meet you in the, this event. It was a really good experience. and. Also, as you know, a lot of people, they are using the Web3 based product in Turkey. Uh, do you, especially in the Turkey, a lot of hackathons happening there with the different chains. Do you have any specific plan for Turkish community, especially university blockchain communities? Because there is also a lot of talented students here. So uh, do you have any specific plan for Turkey, I mean? I mean, the YDX community in Turkey has been striving for many, many months before our visit again uh, a few weeks ago at, uh, at Cosmoverse. Uh, so we, we always have a good time when we come to Turkey. Uh, today, the Turkish community uh, within the YDX, we've got delegates, we've got contributors, we have now validators coming from Turkey. Uh, during our stay in Turkey last month, we also had great conversations with DeFi projects from Turkey as well as centralized exchanges. So I think the future is very bright. Uh, there is plenty to do uh, from the, the product side and the protocol development side uh, with our Turkish friends, uh, but also on the community side, making sure everyone is, is aware of the 
the new generation of, of the YDX, uh, which has just come to birth a few a few days ago. So we are very excited and I can't wait to be back to Istanbul and Turkey in the near future. Can't wait, really can't wait. Uh, actually, I totally, I and really understand very well. And also I get the L of uh, answer. Uh, thanks for your valuable information and valuable answer for this interview. Also, I have a couple question, but it's gonna it's gonna be very fast. But actually, it's it's going to be fun question, uh, but mm -hmm. you should answer without thinking. Okay, that's it. Cool. All right. Let's get started. Let's get started. Bitcoin or Ethereum? Ethereum. Proof of work or proof of stake? Proof of stake. Technical analysis or fundamental analysis? Fundamental analysis. Leverage or no leverage? Oof. <laughs> it depends on which trade. <laughs> All right. Daily trading or monthly trading? Monthly. What is your favorite wallet? Uh, Ledger. Ledger. All right. If crypto a movie, what would it title be? <laughs> Rocky. Rocky. Yeah. Rocky. Rocky. You know the, the the boxer. A Rocky. All right. Yeah. yeah. Rocky. Okay. <laughs> because it has been always uh, fighting and bull markets and bear markets and regulators and crypto drama. So it's a very very long journey, but uh, I'm very excited and. Eventually, Rocky always uh, keep his uh, his heads up and and keep moving forward. So yeah, that would yeah. be Rocky for me. He 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 never give up. He never give up. Okay. He yeah, said, yeah. "If crypto will be a movie, what will the title be?" It's uh, answer is Rocky. All right. That's that's really good, really good. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Charles. It was really really nice to talk to you. I'm so happy to talk to you because. Also, the Turkish community will learn a lot of things, especially for decentralized finance, especially in the DYDX ecosystem, DYDX foundation. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having us, uh, NS, and see you on the DYDX chain.